Right, 5 April 2024, and today I'm going to be having a special feature. Uh, this is an evening feature uh, looking at the launch of the ZIG currency, and I'm going to be very, very quick uh, on this discussion. I've had a number of live uh, discussions uh, going into this uh, live discussion, and there's a lot of people talking about the same thing, so I don't want to take a long time. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. So let us look at what has happened today. And this is very unfortunate. Uh, what has happened uh, because of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, uh, they've launched a new currency uh, called the Zimbabwe Gold. And it comes in denominations of $1, uh, 1 zig, <laughs> 1 zig, 5 zig, 10 zig, 20 zig, uh, 50 zig, 100 zig, and 200 zig. So I'm going to display for you uh, the the notes on the screen. So these are the screens, uh, the notes that you see on the screen. They're coming from the Ministry of Information, and you can see that this is not money. Okay, so let's agree that this is not money. Uh, this is something of very poor quality, and that is the first thing uh, we are looking here at a repetition of what. The Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has been doing in the past, which is not to take what they're doing very seriously. So starting with the quality, the quality is very poor, but that is not all. We have had widespread rejection of this currency today. Uh, there is multiple uh, serious economists who have said that this currency does not work, and they have said that this is a problem. So I want to look here at what Action Aid says, as I said today. So if you look at Action Aid, they've issued a statement on this currency. And I think this is the most organized response that I've seen on, on this currency, the ZIG currency. Action Aid says this is a repetition of the old uh, mistakes that the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has made. And I want to take you through in detail uh, what has happened. And I want to look at what they've taken away, what they've put in place, why it's a problem. So let's look at what they've taken away. They've taken away the Zimbabwe dollar. So that old Zimbabwe dollar that you know is gone. They've taken away the foreign exchange auction. So there's no more foreign exchange auction. They've taken away government US dollar salaries. So employees in government will no longer be paid in US dollars. And they've taken away the old ZIG. So there was another ZIG that I talked about about two months ago. That is gone. There's no more ZIG gold not so they've taken that uh i'm feeling a bit of echo so let's find where, where that echo is coming from and get rid of it All right so they've taken away that old uh, zig and now they have added a number of things so we want to look at what they've added they've added this structured currency that i just showed you they've added a new interbank uh, market so this is a new interbank market with price discovery they've added uh, a, a percentage of 25% by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, which should be a provision of liquidity to the market. So uh, the things that I'm showing you here, that in a long document that I have presented on gambaco.com, so if you go to gambaco.com, you will see that document there at the very end of a post that we've done, which covers and summarizes what I'm saying here. And what is missing is what happens to the balances that we have today. So what are the balances as of today? What does the government of Zimbabwe have in their bank? What do customers have in eco cash? What do customers have uh, in, 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 um, uh, in cash at home? So this is not properly explained. So where are we starting? That is not properly explaining uh, explained. And what if someone comes to the end prints one trillion because currently there's 18 trillion in circulation what if someone comes to the prince 18 trillion are they going to accept it or are they going to use the hundred thousand uh, zwl limit that they put in place so this is not properly explained this is the problem uh and i, I want to look at um <laughs> there's a comment that i'm looking at god knows I'm looking at a comment. I hope that you're hearing me properly. Let's now look at um, 
other things here, there is a lot of missing stuff that I want to explain. So we say that we don't know how much money is in the market. So I'm very disappointed that they did not put in place a description of how much money we have now. How much cash we have in the bank, how much cash we have in eco cash, how much cash we have at homes, how much cash we have in the interbank market, and how much cash we have as loans and credit. So when you're changing something, you must draw a line and say, this is where we are. So Governor Mshavanu has not done a good job of explaining what we have. Where are we right now? He did not explain. I looked through the monetary policy statement, but he is not clear. So let me explain to, me, to you what I say when I say it's not clear. The accounting, the money that, that is in the system as if it belongs to the government of Zimbabwe. And that is a very, very big problem. The accounting remittances. So there is a mishmash of counting uh, right now. And there needs to be an audit to say, where are we? How much money is in the Zimbabwe system? That question is not answered. And Mkoma uh, Mbatatis Mbatatis, he said, I want information. Go to gambako.com. I've got the full document, 78 pages. They have not clearly answered. If you say right now, divide by 13,000, uh, which they've put as their exchange rate, how much money is in the system? They have not answered that question. So this take this very, very seriously. If Mbatatis is from the Reserve Bank, uh, take what I'm saying to you very, very seriously. What is the money that we currently have? That question is not answered. And that is where all the confidence is going to fall apart. You know how big EcoCash is. How much money is in EcoCash right now as you speak? And how much is it going to be when you convert? How much money is owed by the, by the government of Zimbabwe? How many loans have been issued? And at what interest rate? Because they've also brought down the interest rates. Uh, I think they've brought down the interest rates to 25% from 120%. So what does that mean? How much money now do we have? And when someone is paying off their loan, are they paying off at the old interest rate or are they paying back at the new interest rate? So these are very important questions which are not answered. So they've not set what to call a baseline. Uh, Governor Mshavanu has not done a proper baseline of what is in the current system. And then we want to look at uh, who is going to audit the gold reserve? So they said that they, they, you can now go to your bank and take your zig, and you'll be able to get gold if you want. Who is auditing this? Uh, remember what happened with the previous African bank backed bond notes. There was supposed to be a committee at the Reserve Bank that that was dealing with these issues. At the moment, who is in that committee? Who are these people and are they going to be reporting? If you look at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe website, currently it's not being updated. It appears to be down. Mm -hmm. So when I went in the morning to look at it, it appeared to be down. It's up now, but it doesn't have current information. Where are we going to be getting information about what's happening in the market? And our, our weekly reports going to come back. Those are very, very important questions uh, that have not been answered. Then we go to the classes of money. There is transactional money. There is savings, there's debt and loans. What I looked at here, uh, when I look at transacting, is the money going to be available in the ATM? Because the biggest mistake which uh, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has done is to allow money to be available only to the black market. So it's issued to, to the black market before it goes to people. Are we going to be having the same issue where the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, through their dealers, uh, so the, the black market in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe issues notes to people on the street or the runners. Are we going to have a black market? And is the interbank going to be allowed to float? So if it's allowed to float, to what extent is the black market or, or the formal market or the interbank market going to be allowed to float? Because as we know, a country like South Africa does not have a black market. So if you're in South Africa here and you're holding dollars, you have to go to the Beirut change. I did not see the reintroduction here of uh, Beirut change. So what this means is that people are still going to be transacting in US dollars. And you know what happens when you got US dollars and another currency, the US dollar will eventually overpower the other currency. 
and there'll be nothing uh, of sense to, 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 to make of this zig. Suddenly, something's going to happen and you wake up one day with a floating currency that is not 13,000 and the more it falls, <laughs> the more you, you, you deal with it. So I now want to go to the final steps here, uh, which is what is the zig trying to solve? So let's spend a bit of time on what the zig is trying to solve. So I want to go to Mkomawangu Gilbert before I go on that. Uh, I want to go to Mkomawangu Gilbert and address Nyaye Metz. <laughs> Metz, he's saying that Metz, Vagambakwe Zininge Shoma. Right, I, I want to deal with Metz afterwards. But let me deal with what the zig is trying to address. The zig is trying to address the fall of the currency value. The value of the Zimbabwe dollar has crashed more than 8,000. Uh, times in the past um, month. So since January, we've came from 1S to 5,000 uh, to 1S to 40,000, which we were yesterday. So we're trying to arrest the collapse of the Zimbabwe dollar by introducing a currency that is gold-backed. And where that will fail is because you've got interest being generated in the environment. So you've got interest of uh, 15%, let's say, uh, bank to bank, they're charging each other 15%, or they're charging the, the public, members of the public, 25%. That money is growing. Then you've got printing that is taking place. Who is going to be controlling the printing? So the two sources of money which are going to come is the interest, which is going to be created in the market, and also the printing, and then the inflation of uh, depreciation. When it depreciates, suddenly, if I borrowed money in US dollars and I have to return it in ZIG, it keeps growing. So if you don't have confidence in, the, in that currency, what it means is that eventually you are creating more ZIG than the underlying asset. So that is where uh, this whole thing is going to come again to the same point. You are creating more money and the underlying asset, which is the gold, is not going to be enough to cover that gold. Then let's go to the second uh, point here, which is currency speculation is not being punished. Uh, John Mangundia published multiple lists of companies that were dealing in foreign currency. None of those uh, companies were punished because they belong to people in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. They belong to ZANU PF people. So this is still going to continue. Uh, You're going to have the same issue of people getting cash because cash is, is not available in Zimbabwe. People with cash then sell it at a premium and people who take the, 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 the interbank market and speculate on it, they are not punished. And when I talk of speculation here, I'm talking about dropping the value of that zig. It's going to be dropped. Uh, in South Africa, there was speculation here uh, last year. Many, many, many major banks were fined. But in Zimbabwe, the problem is that once someone is caught, they're not being punished. Then we have a toxic political environment. In Zimbabwe currently, anything that ZANU-PF does is immediately rejected. So it's out of hand, it's rejected, it doesn't work. So that has not been addressed. I know the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe cannot address the toxic uh, culture, the poli toxic political culture, but it's there. It's right there. Anything Mnangawa does, no one is going to accept it. And this is where the, uh, the, the dialogue call by Nelson Chamisa has to be heard, heeded. So Mnangawa doesn't want to have dialogue and immediately that is going to drop uh, this currency. We then have the law FDI. Uh, there's no uh, foreign direct investment in Zimbabwe currently. Uh, the guys in Zimbabwe are talking about money coming in, but the truth is that there's no money coming in because of the poor uh, in investment image of Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe is not seen as a good investment image. The only investors coming to Zimbabwe investors that want to hit and run those are the kind of investors that you get or you get the chinese guys who come in to exploit the resources but they do not do anything they don't put anything into the environment uh, to improve the environment or to improve the market then we've got low production zimbabwe has got very low production high imports and the reason why you put high imports is because currently in zimbabwe there's no capacity uh, the money in zimbabwe is very expensive and so the people who are producing, they find it cheaper to just get the US dollars, go to South Africa and buy cheaper 
and sell as a commodity. So they take commodities from South Africa and they sell them in Zimbabwe. And the people who are doing this are mainly people in Zanupia. So they buy things in South Africa, uh, they've got access to the foreign currency, and they sell all these goods in Zimbabwe. Then we've got the drought. Uh, the drought is going to be a major issue. Uh, how are we going to deal with the issue of the drought? This is immediately going to impact the currency. It's going to collapse. And then we've got the large number of projects that are not complete. Mnangagwa has got multiple projects that are not complete that need to be funded. And that money needs to be borrowed from somewhere. So all these things that I've laid out here, they can they show you that immediately the zig currency is not going to stand. Uh, it's going to fall within a very short space of time. And then I want to conclude with what needs to be done. So let, let's conclude with what, what needs to be done. Uh, this currency has been widely rejected. And as I was showing you here, uh, people who are in this uh, meeting, they include Yang Mnangagwa here. Uh, you can see Yang Mnangagwa uh, Kuda is the deputy minister. Uh, Governor Mshavanu there. Um, uh, Mshavanu again. And we obviously had all these people here, the journalists uh, sitting around. Uh, Mangunja was over there. And I am battling to see Mtuli <laughs> Ngobe over there. Uh, and people are calling this currency the Ziggy Ziggy. So this is the actual uh, memes that are going around. People are not confident in this currency, but there is a number of things that are going to happen, and there's a number of things that need to be done. So let's start with uh, what is going to happen. Uh, what is going to happen is that there's going to be even more widespread uh, rejection of this currency. Uh, this Zig currency is not properly explained. It has been introduced in an ad hoc manner. It is not solving the problems that I've described to you. I've described to you 10 problems right now which need to be solved. They have not solved those 10 problems, uh, which is lack of confidence, excessive printing, current speculators not being uh, uh, punished, toxic political environment, low FDI, low production, large number of incomplete government projects, drought, high salary bills. I've explained this to you. Now, the Zig currency is being introduced in this environment without dealing with all those issues that I've raised here. And it's going to fail. Uh, already, you can see that people are not accepting it. If you take your money and US dollar and put it into Zig, you are throwing it down the drain. That is the fact until they address the political issues. So the political issues need to be addressed. And the first step in addressing the political issues is to deal with the dialogue. So there needs to be a political dialogue in Zimbabwe. There also needs to be a economic dialogue. So a widespread, uh, broad-based dialogue around the country. You can see, Kuti, everyone today is looking at what has been said. And it's clear. Uh, there is no one, even a ZANPF member. If you say, ZANPF member, I'm going to take $1,000 and I give you 100, uh, 130, okay, 1,000, 1.3 million zig. You owe me a zig, you owe me dollar. And then after three months, we see who's got more money. And what is, we're going to find out is that the ZANPF member is going to reject the zig. No one wants the zig. And the governor who understand this very, very quickly, Kuti, the zig, there is no difference between the zig and daylight robbery. It's the same thing. Uh, people are going to be robbed of their monies, especially if that money is not in the ATM. If I walk in Harare and I don't see money coming out of the ATM, I know that it's a, it's a scam. I know that they're, they're scamming people because the moment they have money in the ATM, then suddenly you won't have all the problems that you have uh, in Zimbabwe. If you go to Zambia right now, the only place where you find people holding stashes of cash is on the Zimbabwean borders. Once you go to Lusaka, there is no one holding cash around and, and, and exchanging cash. So the problem that we have in Zimbabwe is people are selling money as a product. And this is coming from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. It cannot be fixed until the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe removes itself from the corrupt practices. So is uh, Governor Mishaiwan able to crack down on the guys who have been in the Reserve Bank conducting these corrupt deals? Is he able to crack down on the banking sector as a whole? Is he able to crack down on Adam Nangagwa, uh, Adam Changwa, uh, Adam Wikino, uh, all these guys who have been doing corrupt deals? If he does that, 
is going to be thrown out uh, as quickly as possible. So uh, it's very important to understand that the ZIG will not be accepted under these current, current political uh, environments. You can try to prop it up. You can try to say a lot, but it won't work uh, because it's being pushed down or it will be pushed down by the very same people that are in the system. So you first of all have to change the system, then you have a currency that works. If you look at Mozambique, the first thing that they had to do uh, after the war was to introduce a currency. That currency failed because there was a war between uh, the, the, the opposition party, uh, which is Renamo, and the ruling party uh, in Mozambique there. They had a fight. So for many, many years, the Mozambican currency was not stable. However, when they introduced this current one that they have now, if you go to Mozambique now and you hold their banknote, it's a very high quality and it's very stable. You can also get it in the ATM. They don't play with their money. Uh, you, you only get the money at the bureau de change. So if you go to Mozambique, you cannot walk around changing money anymore. So before there was that, and at the moment in Zimbabwe, they have not addressed this thing of money being taken uh, from uh, the street, so the, the handling of money in the street and trading of money by dealers from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, that is the biggest problem. And then eventually, uh, ED is going to realize that what he's trying to do will not work without a political solution. And I, I think this is going to be very, very quickly. I give this thing only April, this one month of April, and the whole thing is going to collapse. Uh, it's going to come crashing down like a house of cards. This is what is going to happen to the Zig. And I am fortunate enough, Kuti, I talked about the Zig uh, almost six months ago. Uh, when I talked about the Zig, at that point, the current was 1 is to 5,000. What made the currency collapse to the extent that it has collapsed now is because of the rigging of the elections. So firstly, the rigging of the elections and a combination of all these factors that I've given you, specifically the rapid printing of money within the Reserve Bank of Money uh, of Zimbabwe. They print money rapidly and they go on the street and buy uh, all these monies. They will not be able to stop uh, because if they stop, how are they going to pay uh, the bills that they have? Mbuz interchange is not finished. The roads are not finished. Parliament is not finished. All the dams are not finished. So these are infrastructure projects that need massive amounts of money. The, the Wange uh, project, the Chinese have not been paid. And these are 500 million US dollars that we're talking about. It's not a small amount of money. So there is a big problem and they cannot solve it in this manner. So this thing is going to collapse and it's going to collapse uh, very, very quickly. I now want to go into the comments. Uh, so let's look at the comments here very quickly before we wrap up. Uh, I've been talking for too long. Uh, let's see what is here. Right, so let's let's look at uh, the comments very quickly. Uh, my brothers have been here uh, wanting to give me their point of view. So we've been on for about 23 minutes. I'm going to take about five minutes on the comments and then we'll move from there. Mkoma Tawanda saying, Zig, you know, Eko. It means Zimbabwe gold, but there is no gold uh, backing this thing. The amount of gold that we have is not sufficient. That is why I said, let's start with where we are. How much money is in the system? If you answer that question, you will see 300 million is not sufficient. So start there. What's the baseline? Where are we? How much money is in the system? Uh, you must answer that question. Especially in that eco cash system. How much money is sitting in eco cash? Because I have a feeling that money which is sitting in eco cash is more than money that is sitting anywhere else. There is a lot of money in that environment. And it's a private company running that environment. Do they have access to say how much money is sitting over there? And I see that they've said that there must be a link between the bank accounts. How is that going to be done? What about the other monies? Uh, for example, INSCO has got their own money. How is that going to work? And also cash on hand. How much cash is on hand? This is a big problem. How much money is the government owe? And is that money backed with anything else except the numbers? And then let's go to another comment here. Uh, all right. Mkoma Divine says, uh, Zig will fall within 30 days. Right. Mkoma Divine, for this nice comment, I'm going to give you $1 billion. <laughs> of course, I'm not. So 
WhatsApp me and I'll give you one billion dollars. Uh, one billion dollars, that's yours. So I'm going to be giving away some billion dollars uh, from this week going forward. Uh, every time someone get, 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 makes a comment that I like, I'm going to give them a billion. And the billion is Yaga Gadzero, I don't give you on Gono. What we're seeing here is uh, Mshavan being thrust into the same fairness uh, that Mangonji was thrust into. The political quad gumaya uh, that is existing right now is because of Mnangagwa's inability to understand the political environment. Mnangagwa is very stubborn. Uh, when you talk to ED and you look at him, right now he thinks everything is fine. Uh, if you go right now to his house and say, is it okay to have your son and your, your, your cousin and your brother-in-law and everyone in, in government? He, th he says it's fine. The structure of the Zimbabwe government is wrong. The people that are being employed by the Zimbabwe government are totally the wrong people. And the programs and policies of Mnangagwa are totally wrong. The delivery of the projects is wrong. It's, it's incomplete. Uh, it, it, it defies logic. So <laughs> I don't even know what to say about <laughs> Mnangagwa. Then Zik is the strongest currency in Southern Africa. Mgoma Mbatasi, I won't give you <laughs> any billion for this because I don't know what he, is that a real name. And then, <clears throat> then Mkoma, uh, Joelin is saying, Kamako, you're articulating things very well. Yes, Joelin, this is something that even a grandmother in the village can describe to you. So let's start with when you say articulate what it means it means good what is the bigger picture the bigger picture is that in the whole of southern africa uh, namibia zambia botswana malawi all these countries they've got a currency zimbabwe has not had a currency since 2003 that is when the zimbabwe dollar started to crash the reason why this thing is crashing is because of the politics zanpf it's a problem. They will never get it. And if you have a money, you can buy a Zimbabwe dollar, you can buy a money, you can buy a That day when you get rid of Mnangagwa and his team, then you are going to see. Uh, Zig is just a, a new thing that they're introducing. Because what they're trying to do is to take money from your pocket and put it in theirs. So, Maria, you know, Torwa, you know, Jamurwa, you know, pocket ya ED, you know, pocket ya Wikino, you know, pocket ya Wangwe and Skatawa Mastawa. So, that is what they're doing. They're taking money from your pocket. You got no pension, you got no house, you got no car. Because they destroy the system and then they destroy the asset. So, that is how they do it. And you saw to, to, my, to my bank notes, uh, the gold that they've got is very, very little gold. They don't have any gold. Uh, so what is it that they're talking about baking with gold? And these are not political statements that I'm making here. It's numbers. We want the numbers. Mushavan, tell us how much money is in the system. Break it down. Don't give us numbers from January 2024. If you look at the statement that is giving now, it's got numbers from January 2024. Give us the numbers as of yesterday. Now, what are the numbers of the money which is actually settling right now? Uh, they are talking of 18 trillion in the environment. What does 18 trillion mean? So keep reading through these statements and you see Kuti, what these guys are doing is a mess. It's not uh, right. And then what is the rate of zig? Rate of zig is 13,700, I think. But by the end of this month, so take this month that I'm, I'm giving you here. And if this has not happened, I'm going to give someone. 1,000 runs. So record this. This is what? 29 minutes and 12 on the 5th on the fifth of April. I'm going to give someone 1,000 runs if this doesn't happen. The ZIG is going to lose value by five times. So it will be trading over 60,000 by the end of this April. Uh, sorry, today is 5 April. So by the 31st of April, the ZIG will be trading at least um, 60, 1 is to 60,000. And I'm giving this to you because tomorrow when it opens, the ZIG is going to crash. Uh, so tomorrow is Saturday. So by Monday, the ZIG is going to crash if they open a real interbank market. There is no one stupid enough uh, to hold the ZIG. So what they are going to do, they are going to crash that thing on Monday morning. And so the, that interbank market is going to be, to be opened. 
it's not going to be that thing that you see when you walk in any normal country. Uh, when you walk in, in South Africa, you see that number flashing. That is uh, a market, a, a, money, a foreign currency market. In Zimbabwe, they cannot do that uh, because if they do that, it's going to totally collapse. And then Mkoma Trevor is saying, I think when is out of the picture now, the attention is Rosano messing up. No more Chamisa and sanction blaming Chamisa. Yes, now we can blame Mahere. <laughs> and these guys are saying Mahere should uh, this Mahere, that. I don't think there's a problem. Uh, you are going to see this thing collapsing in front of your eyes. I say this, Kuti, the day you see Mtuli Ngube getting fired uh, and Young Kuda, those two, when they're fired, then things are going to start being addressed. You currently have some of the worst people running this system. Um, Mangunjiga, who doesn't know what Mangunjiga is clueless. And then if you look at uh, the guy who just got in, uh, John Mchaiwan, he is so naive, Kuti, he thinks Kuti Van River Reserve Bank, VSA, Varipasa, Varipo. Those people are the worst uh, currency manipulators and drug lords. Uh, sorry, not drug lords. <laughs> They're not drug lords, right? I don't know if they do drugs also. But Mkoma Majori says, how much is 1,000 rand in dollars or euros? So 1,000 rand is 50 dollars. And the Mario Yaka Simba Sky to command a thousand Munotenga KFC Midwest, meaning one thousand. Yeah, every week is a cadaver. When I got to South Africa here, it was one is to five. Uh, that was in 2006. And the currency was too strong. The unions were striking because the, the rand was too strong. Right now, the rand is one is to two thousand. Tourists are flocking uh, to South Africa. Uh, here, where I live in, um, in Cape Town. Tourists can come here from Germany and stay here for a month. I change one thousand dollars. That is why you see, good in Zimbabwe, there's a problem. They don't know how to link currency to production. They don't know how to separate money. Could you write a ring fence the currency? Could you currency bad we? So they can do politics and everything, but the Reserve Bank should not be touched. Uh, they should not be playing games at the Reserve Bank. You can't put Van Varukis or Reserve Bank, Vasanga Zizarukit, into the Minister of Finance. Saka, Ugata Sasama like Mtuli Ngobe. He was not someone that had ran a successful enterprise. So you should have looked for someone quite successful, someone solid to put in that position. Mtuli Ngobe was more of an academic. And right now you can see the academic approach that he's taking. Everything that Mtuli Ngobe is doing is academic. Uyu, Governor Ato Chaka Buku. Could I understand the Kutijiz Rukiti, Kamamone Re Governor Achiveringa book? The governor of the Reserve Bank was reading a book to understand what a, a structured currency is. It makes no sense uh, because what you should have just done is to remove everything and start with the dollars, the actual dollars in the market. And then people will struggle with that little money that they have, but it's real money. At the moment, you're going to destroy value again. And then, as I said, the day you see money in the ATM, the reason why they're not putting money in the ATM. Is because they are corrupt and, and they want to continue the system of looting. So looting is being done because money is not in the ATM. You cannot use a swipe machine, and you've got that strange thing called eco cash. So eco cash, that is how they do black market. So everything that is happening on eco cash right now, 99.99% of everything happening on eco cash is black market. They are, that's why they transact. So when okay, I'm eco cash. You will see good balance here gambako every day, 5,000. But pande madara arimomo, anukwasa kuchinja a limit. You only 500,000 per day. And who is going to, to check uh, what is happening there? Is there an audit? What if I make it 500,000 today, then my nerunoi chinja, it's 5,000. The Reserve Bank is going to clue how to do an audit. So this is the problem that we have. Uh, the whole environment is rotten. And it cannot be fixed by a currency. And I believe Action Aid is correct. Uh, Action Aid, you can go and look at this statement by Action Aid. It's there on Gambago.com. It's also there on Twitter. You just type press statement by Action Aid. No one is taking this uh, seriously. Now, let's conclude with one more comment. And that is to say, too much negativity. <clears throat> Mkoma, I promise. Uh, I want to tell you how I feel about this thing. I'm almost in tears. Uh, it looks like we are 
working against the Mnangaba government. But it's not true. Mnangaba and his people, they must listen. That is the truth. People are well-meaning and they want to help the Mnangaba government to succeed. But these guys don't listen. Mkoma, how many people have offered Mnangaba advice on the currency? So, if we are offering this advice, it's not negativity. So, let me give you on the high level what I've been saying here since before the election. I said, declare a state of emergency, take away the Zimbabwe dollar, improve productivity by reducing interest rates, appoint the correct people at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, fire Mangunja. You can go back to all the things that I've been saying uh, since before the elections. Then after the elections, we said, have dialogue, form a government of national unity, solve the political issues. Because alone, Mnangaba, the next thing that is going to happen, kubuda kwa Mnangazwa, kumanyiswa, either anu manyiswa nevanu, kanawata aja manyiswa nevanu wake. Because this is not sustainable. Where have you ever seen a whole country with 300 million? Only. Salam kaven kanya, marie nyika yese, it's 300 million. And they're also counting money which does not belong to them. They're counting balances is part of that uh, uh, 300 million. So what I'm saying is ED must understand and must appreciate and I know that ED watches here. He must appreciate Kuti. people are not hating him or when they say have a dialogue address the issues in the country. This was done in Kenya. This was done in Mozambique. In South Africa here we've got the government of national unity. ED must just address the political issues. They must not leave this to people like Mshayavano to fix. And once you have a political agreement and a, a proper political environment, everything will work. Will work. So that is it. And, and that's why in the GT, uh, I, I feel so uh, bad about having to come and have a discussion like this. In a month's time, the ZIG will be 1 is to 60,000. And for sure, in a month's time, we come here and it'll be one is to 60,000 or one is to 70,000. It doesn't serve me any purpose. I also want to, Zimbabwe to do well, but it can't do well under these conditions. And then, Koma could I think uh, the monetary policy is just for time pushing and nothing else? I didn't see Mkoma Wangu MS here. Uh, here is Mkoma MS. I read my comments, Gambago. Don't blow me because I don't agree with you. What don't you agree with me, Mkoma? Um, let, let me see what he says here. Uh, Mkoma MS saying, he will never fire Mtuli Ngombe. This is the guy who believes that Zimbabwe dollar can never succeed without its own currency. He holds that view as well. Yes, I do not disagree with Zimbabwe dollar. Even Chamisa's policies include the Zimbabwe dollar. What I disagree with it is a random, haphazard, and irrational approach that Mnangabo is using of putting in place a currency. First, you have to fix the environment. You have to prepare the ground. You must have the uh, dialogue first. And then after the dialogue, you can proceed with implementing a currency. What he's launching now is setting himself up for failure. Uh, let's agree. Kuti Mnangagwa's MMEs right now are laughing at him for, for, for this approach. What kind of a launch is this that, that Mnangagwa has done uh, of, of the ZIG? Like I'm asking you, how much money do we have now in the environment? What will happen if he wakes up and he discovers that what he believes is not in, in place. So, uh, guys, this is a, a setup uh, for, for, for Mnangagwa, and it's a very bad uh, setup. So, I think uh, this is it for now, uh, and I would like to end it here. And that is Mukoma Simba there saying ED is used to using force, command politics. That's what he knows. Uh, and to, to just put it into context, it's not only Zimbabwe where bad policies are made. Every country has bad policies. The problem with ED is the failure to negotiate. He does not want to negotiate. And he's not a listening president. That, that is the problem. Um, Nangaba, who came into office saying he's a listening president, currently Nangaba is showing that he's not a listening president. He is uh, railroading these policies and making everyone suffer in the process um, and Mgoma uh, was saying, what will the coins be called? That's a half a quarter. 
That is what he said. Half and quarter. Those are the, the names of the so half zig, quarter zig. <laughs> that is it. And then Mkoma Gabaga said you will need 45 minutes daily for presentation. Please, we learn. Yes, I, I'm gonna be back here again in the morning. And unfortunately, we cannot go 24 hours. <clears throat> I was going to go 24 hours. We plan to go 24 hours so that we can give you guys a chance to talk here. Uh, but I know everyone is hurting. Uh, most Zimbabweans out there are hurting. They're losing money. A lot of Zimbabweans are losing money. On Monday, you're going to find out your money is buying nothing uh, because they're floated. So floating means something. Uh, when they float your money, it means something. Uh, you will see on Monday, we'll be back here talking about it. And I hope that they don't do what they did last time. So they're going to float and then they hold it with a fake uh, number. So I hope that they don't do that. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Yes, my soldier will be getting Zig as their salary. No one is allowed to transact in any other currency uh, starting on Monday. In fact, starting tomorrow. So you won't be allowed to, uh, to transact in US dollars. But when I say transact, I mean you won't be allowed to put a price of dollars on your goods. And the danger is that eventually the dollarization will begin again and, and it will all be a mess. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching.